Hello guys, my name is Crystal, aka Crystal X on Night and View, and in today's um, CBI tutorial, I'm going to cover the Get Basics. In my past tutorial, I covered the f entire file menu. In this tutorial, I want to try to get through to Edit and Select, and maybe we could probably cover a few more of these. Um, due to some, most of them being really simple and um, them not being necessary as far as using them in creating for, I guess, um, 3D gaming sites. So I'm going to start by creating a, um, just a new, I guess, blank canvas and we're going to go to edit. Alright, so the menu um, options, we're going to learn how to undo, redo. I don't use fade. It's kind of a um, modified thing. I, I don't really use I've never used it. Undo history is important. Um, you can actually open this up as a separate tab or dialog box. Um, there's cut, copy, um, copy visible. I've never used it really, but it can be handy. There's paste. Um, you can use the paste into as well, paste as. Um, this one's kind of actually um, cool and important. We can mess around this a lot. And then um, from there, I don't use any of these, to be honest. I don't use preferences. Um, keyboard shortcuts can actually be really good. You can open that up and it'll show you all your keyboard shortcuts that you can use, or you can um, customize them. That one you play around with and get familiar with. Then there's units. You can create the units um, that are used for, I guess, measuring in here. I leave the default. I don't mind millimeters, points, or um, picas. Those are the main three. And I actually like mine in inches. Or not inches. Um, these are This is pixels. So I'm leaving the unit edit or alone. Uh, modules. I don't mess with that either. These are more developer tools for advanced people. As beginners, we're going to um, just cover the basics. I'm just going to draw some stuff on here. So, um, if you go to edit and you go to undo, um, it basically just um, reverses the action that you just did, and you can do this an unlimited amount of times. And as shown, you can open up a um, dial-up box to do your undo history. You can even redo it as well, which is what this button up here, the redo. So you can go to undo, redo, and you can also do this manually on your keyboard by using Control z to undo and Control y to redo. I find it faster with the keyboard. I really almost never open this menu much unless I'm using the paste into or no paste as for me. Um, cut. This allows you to um, completely remove the image that's visible regardless of the layers. Actually it's on within the layer and um Let's see, copy allows you to copy the selected area. In this case, if you press copy right now, I believe it will, it copies the entire um, image that you have selected. And then paste allows you to paste the image that you copied or have um, copied onto your clipboard. So I'm going to start back with an empty background. I'm actually going to delete that too. And just start with a nice transparent background. And switch from my mouse to my pencil. And for some reason, my fade dynamics are on, so I will have to turn that off later. And I guess later means now for... Okay, there we go. That's going to drive me insane.
Okay, so... Um, let's continue to go. That pretty much covers the edit menu. Okay, let's go to um, paste as. You could paste it as a new image. And it starts um, the image that we got copied earlier. And it pastes as a new image. And then you can also go to paste as. And it'll make it into a new layer on top of this image. Or actually, let me go back to the old one. And then do paste as to give you a better example. And now you see it as a new layer on top of the former one that we had. And also we can go to paste as um, a brush and to make it into a brush. I'm not going to cover brushes and patterns right now um, because they're more advanced stuff. But I will show you how to do these in later tutorials. Alright, so select is a really, really, really important, um, I guess, menu option. I actually like this because there's nothing but um, tools dedicated to selection. Like the whole top here are all selection tools. And with select, you can, with the select one, you, there's all, none, invert, float, by color from path. Selection Editor, Feather, Sharpen, Shrink, Grow, Border, Distort, Round It, Rectangle, Toggle, Quick, Mask, Save to Channel, and to Path. We will not use about 70% of these. I'm, uh, for Selection, we're mostly going to go to Select All, which selects your whole entire um, <clears throat> layer that you're currently working on. And then from there, you can um, work within that selection. You can draw within it, delete within it, erase within it, so forth. You can go to select none. Whatever is selected, it unselects. And then there's invert. This one's really important. I will use this a lot. Okay, so best way I can demonstrate invert. Let's paint this black. Let's get um, white going. Okay, so let's say I wanted to paint everywhere but um, the outside of this square right here, I just formed pink. I would go to select invert and the area that I selected is now no longer selected. Everywhere on the outside is. So when I go to color, it colors the whole outside or I can work within the outside of that box. I just kind of like this picture. <laughs> okay, so. Um, and if I were to invert it again, and you can also use Control i to invert, I'm no longer working outside this box, so I can within this one. So. And I have really got to figure out what it's causing my get to be so jumpy and have different sizes but overall this is a general idea it allows you to um i guess in or, or make opposite um select the opposite of the area that you um have selected so next is float this creates a section Okay, I'm just not even going to cover float because it's kind of difficult to explain. It's usually when you're pasting a layer and it's between layers. It's deciding if you're going to add it to a new one or onto the layer that you're currently working. So it's just in between until you decide either to paste it onto your current layer or make it its own. That's what float does. Um... Uh, let's go to by color. This allows you to select areas by the color and work within that area. Like, 
now um, because I clicked the pink area only the pink area is selected and that's the only area that will be affected now nothing else will and I should change my color that way you can see this better let's do green and as you can see now only the green I mean only the pink area can be affected I can erase color whatever and you can also use the select by color tool right here and see now only white is selected and I can only let's get like an orangey color I can only affect the um, areas that are white Next, let's let's go on to a new tool. I think you get to um, the gist of the swap by color tool. I'm actually going to skip all of these. We do not need them. Let's go to view. These are important. It allows you to um, see different things on your screen. Um, this one is a representation of the pixels. I would not mess with it. This allows you to zoom your view, but I find it easier to zoom your view um, right here at the bottom of your screen. The next is shrink wrap. I don't mess with that. Full screen allows you to go full screen. I've never needed it. but basically it just eliminates this top part right here. I actually like being able to um, get a little preview of my image and see the title of it. it, lets you know if I've saved it or not, and it also tells you the pixels and how many layers are in it. The next one is to navigate the window. This one's pretty simple to do on its own. You really don't need this. This one shows the selection shows boundaries, your guides. I love to see my guides. I don't know about you guys, if you don't like to see the guides on the side right here to help you um, with your measurements, go ahead, by all means you can get rid of them. There's show grid. Uh, I don't like the grid. It's it does nothing for me because I, again, I can use guides instead. So, grid's important, I guess, if you're, depending on what you're making. Um, there show sample points, there's snap to guides. This one I love um, because when you pull out the guides from the sides, it's easy. Um, you place them where you want and then your images, when you um, move them anywhere, the center, you see the little cross um, that's in between there, snaps onto the guides easily. All right, so um, there's snap to grid. So if you're working with the grid, you can always have everything snap to the grid. There's snap to canvas edge, um, snap to active path. If you create a path, you can snap to that. And then this one shows your menu bar, your rulers, your score bar, and your show status. Um, again, I don't really mess with those too much. Those are standard things that you really do need that help you out a lot. Now, image, this one's fun. And can also, um, bring your images as well. You have to be careful with this. You can duplicate your image, and it'll create the exact same image, the exact same layers in a new window. So, this one could come in handy if you aren't sure about something. Like, if you want to test something out, but it might be like one of those irreversible things. Go ahead and duplicate your image and work with it in a different window and see if you like it. If you do, you can now save this one and have the other one as a backup to refer back to. Let's go to mode. Okay, this one's important because you can now change your layer mode. You can go from, it's a good thing I duplicated this. Now we can go to grayscale, which works in all forms of unsaturated colors which means black, white, and grays. <laughs> That's it. So if you want to create a 50 shades of gray cover, this is the color mode you want to be in. There's indexed. 
I have not worked with this too much, if at all. Usually you end up working with indexed um, color mode is if you're adding, I guess, PSD files to GIMP. Some of them are already indexed. I'm not going to try to explain it because I really can't. I'm not a professional in it. Again, I don't really use it. I end up converting it to um, RGB anyways. But I'm just going to say convert. I don't know what it did. I'm going to reverse that. And go back to grayscale. And go back to RGB actually. Um, the next thing on the image is canvas size. This one's important. You can change the overall size of the image that you're working with here. And then you can use the link to keep the dimensions the same or alter them all together. As you can see from the preview window right here, it shows you the size um, that your canvas is going to be if there's any empty space. And then you can even offset your picture to the new um, setting that you just created. And next, under image, is fit canvas to layers. This Now, whatever layers that you have, the canvas will be fit to it automatically. This is great for if you just add a new image, um, like if you open a new image as a layer, and you want the canvas to fit every picture that you've added. Great way to do it. Um, okay, so if you had a... Let's just say I have this part selected, and this is the only part that I want to be visible. This is um, the size that I want the image to be. Then I would go to Fit Canvas to Selection, and now the image is this size. And I still have the pre, I still have the image from before. It's still there, but it's just now the canvas is this size, so I can um, move my image within that canvas. Um, the next one is print size. Um, this one adjusts the print's resolution. I'm not going to um, mess with that one too much. I am, however, going to go back to this and unselect it. And then I'm going to go to image scale image. This scales your entire image. Be careful. This is not just scale the layer that you're working on. This is the entire image that you're working with scaled. So, on whatever size you decide to resize this to, that's what size the entire image is going to be resized to, and every single layer within it is going to be resized to this. And I'm going to eliminate that, and I'm going to draw something awkward on this layer. All right, as you can see, this is that layer. All right, next one is auto crop image. What now? This one you need to be careful to careful of because whatever size the image is that you're working on, of uh, the layer that you're currently working on, that is what this is going to resize your entire image to. So when I go to auto crop image. It now resized the entire image to the size of this current layer I was working on. Uh, the next one is Zealous Crop. This one um, will auto crop any unused space, um, same as the other one did, except for in this one, you no longer. The image that was there is no longer there. It's just the image that you see. And then there's merge visible um, layers. Anything that you can see, it merges it all together as one. And if it has an alpha channel, it will keep it. Alpha channel meaning any transparent background. Flatten image. This one... Um, is the exact same. It will flatten your image. However, it removes any transparency that you have. Therefore, this is perfect for saving as JPEGs and um, TJs, images that don't require you to have any transparency or ones that you don't plan on being transparent. 
and then align visible layers. Um, it does exactly what it says. It aligns the um, layers that are visible. And you get to um, set different options for it. I'm just not going to mess with that. I never used it. But I can see how it could be sold to someone. Then there's um, guides. I've never used any of these guides. I don't mess with the grid again. And this on um, the image properties, it tells you, well, the properties of the image. It gives you the um, size. It tells you what, how it's going to print, the resolution, the color. And I haven't saved it yet, so it doesn't have a file name, and it has an indeterminate size yet. But it tells you how many pixels are in it, um, how many layers, if there's any channels or paths. Because you it's color profile, and if you've added a comment. And you can even add a comment too. So, um, that's what properties does. Let's see. Um, what properties? What you could do with the comment part is if you want to copyright it or have a um official copyright, that would be the place to add it in. That way, whenever anybody clicks on your image anywhere, even if you upload it to the um photo um bucket, <clears throat> when someone clicks on properties, they will be able to see if your image has um any copyrights or um. They'll also be able to see all the stuff that I just showed you before about the um, image size, resolution, color, mode, all of that stuff. So, um, moving on. Okay, so from images, we move on to layers. Layers work the exact same way as image does, except for it's not focusing on the entire image. It's focused on that specific layer that you're working on. So, you can create a new layer to work on. Um... You can create a new layer from what you've from what you're currently working on from what you see. So it's like is um I wanna say is duplicating it. Okay, it's duplicating it. Never mind. It's basically it duplicated everything that you've seen. So from visible what was seen in um that layer that I um had create it was from these two layers so if I wanted to create a layer that involved like five layers I was working with that would be the one to use it merges all of those into one image and then but onto a new layer okay let's go back to here then there's duplicate layer it will duplicate the current layer that you are working on so Let's say I'm working on this one. If I go to duplicate a layer, it will duplicate this and copy it. Exactly, this is on a new layer. The next one is a new layer group. This one is important for those of you who want to group your layers. Um, this will come in handy in future tutorials. I'll go over it more, but if you want this one um, to be in a group with the other, this would be the tool to use. I can't demonstrate that in this video because my rep recording program does not allow me to move my layers on GIMP. So I will have to find a different program to use in order to show you those in the future. But to continue, um, there's anchor layer whereas, okay, remember how I showed you about the floating layer? You, if you've decided to actually paste it onto the current layer you're working on, then you anchor it. There's merge down. Merge down is if you're working on this one and you want to merge it with the lay, the next visible layer below it, you would merge it. Some art reason wasn't working from here, so I just did it manually by right clicking. Then you can delete a layer altogether. And then there's ones like stack mass transparency, transform. Alright, let's stack I don't use too much again. You can do all of these from the layer mode. So if you wanted to move this layer, ah, okay, I take it back. Maybe I can do it without the video. I can't move it manually, but I can move it with um, 
the stack modifier on the layer menu by uh, going raise I can raise the layer up or I, or I can raise it down and then I can raise all the way to the top or to the bottom using the stack modifier I can also select my previous layer, the next layer, the top layer, or the bottom. This comes in handy if you have like 500 layers and you don't want that. You don't want to have to scroll all the way to the top or all the way to the um, bottom. Totally comes in handy. All right, so I actually just remembered I do use that one. I just use it from the bottom of the dialog box. The next one is mask. Okay, I can say without doubt I do not use this um, at all, if ever, as far as uh, creating 3D gaming content. Okay, transparency, this one can be easily used from over here. You right click and then you can add an alpha channel or remove an alpha channel depending on what type of image you want to create like PNG or um, TGA, JPEG. The next one is, um, yeah, we need it transparency. That's pretty much most of what I use it for. The other stuff can get really complicated. I say take a day, mess with it, see if it's useful to you. If not, don't use it. If so, use it. Tell me about it and tell me how it affected your images. And maybe I'll incorporate it in one of my next videos or into my daily usage. Um, transform, this one's easy. It lets you flip horizontally, it lets you flip vertically. You can also do these with the transform tools. I find it a lot easier to use the tools than these menus. Or, um, yeah, than the modifiers over here. It's, it's quicker, I'll say that, because you don't have to go to the menu and find a dialog box and then go to the modifier. Alright, this one rotates it 90 degrees clockwise. As you know, clockwise is going this way. Counterclockwise is going the other way. Um, 180 degrees is a complete flip. Or it's, um, it's like flipping it over. Or turning it um, counterclockwise 90 degrees twice. Let's see. Um, the This one allows you to rotate it manually. And then there's the offset. I don't use that one. Layer boundary size. This one could come in handy to adjust the layer's dimensions. Basically, you're adjusting the layer size. It's scaling. That's what it is. Pretty much. Except for it's just um, to that layer. This one is layer to image size. I use this one a lot. Um, let's just say... I had a new layer and it was just this white square so and this is the only side, the square is only as big as the square that you see. If I um, use the image layer, it's now the same size as this image. And it just has a transparent background around the white square. That's what that one allows you to do. Um, scale layer, it allows you to change the size of the layer, pretty much. I guess I could demonstrate this. Um, You can actually do this manually, so you will be able to get like a preview by using a scale <clears throat> by using the scale tool. Sorry, throat's getting a little bit dry. And um, next is auto crop layer. It allows you to crop it down <clears throat> to size and eliminate the transparent background, but only on that layer. So I'm just gonna go ahead and conclude this tutorial um, for now because I don't want it to run any longer and I think I've covered the basics as far as um, these menus and dialog boxes and what they can do and I've pretty much shown you <clears throat> how useful they can be. 
If you have any comments or questions, go ahead and leave them below. And you can also visit me at my club on I Envy Club Bubblegum AP and find some interesting things there. Alright, so thank you guys for watching. I'm Crystal, and goodbye.